afternoon and welcome to the law. This is your legal light. This is your help law. I'm Samson Ladi Anyanini. And as we promised you last week, we have the Director of Legal Education uh, joining us again. But this time, we're keeping a focus on legal education. And we have received some of your questions for him already. Some of you are asking about entrance exams. Some of you are asking about how to get into the law school. We will be right back to get into today's session titled Makola and Legal Education. We'll be right back. Legal Profession Act 1960, Act 32. Part 2, Legal Education, Section 13.1a and 3. 1. It shall be the duty of the General Legal Council to make arrangements a. For establishing a system of legal education. 3. The Council shall issue to those who have satisfied the Council that they have attained the necessary standards of proficiency in the law, that they have obtained adequate practical experience in the law, and that they are otherwise qualified to practice as lawyers a certificate to that effect, hereinafter referred to as a qualifying certificate. Right, so on our Law 101, we go to the center and the heart of what regulates legal education in Ghana. And as I said already, some of you have already sent in your uh, questions, and I presume that most of those questions are coming from prospective students of the Makola. So <clears throat> let's begin with our Law 101. And as I mentioned earlier, our guests, the director of the League of the Ghana School of Law, Yao Opong, um, who is the Marehini of Achim Ebuakwa under the name Oman Sumfu Berima Opong Kodie, joins us once again. Thank you very much for making the time to join us. It's a privilege to be here once again. Thank you. Right. So, the Legal Profession Act that we have read from. First of all, what, what is that act about? And then the provision that we have just looked at, Section 13, uh, does it mean, therefore, that it must be a difficult thing to become a lawyer? Well, thank you very much. Um, I think a background to the act is the fact that um, until Ghana attained independence, Ghanaians who intended or were desirous of becoming lawyers had to travel to especially United Kingdom. And some went to Farabay College at um, uh, Liberia mm -hmm. to have um, this, uh, the legal education over there. So over time, up, or after attaining independence, the then president and the political system saw the need to establish our own system of legal education. Mm. And the records show that it took some pains before even the people who were desirous of becoming lawyers <laughs> could even, quote unquote, trust the system to train them to the extent that they can compete with the English trained lawyers who obviously people dreaded in a way <laughs> because of the level of uh, legal training that they have received and so on. So in, uh, in 1958, the, um, the government then established the General Legal Council and then charged them with the responsibility to 
um, train lawyers. Subsequently, other amendments followed. And then in 1960, Parliament of the Republic of Ghana passed this uh, Legal Profession Act, 1960. The date of assent of mm -hmm. the president mm -hmm. was 12 January 1961, when it actually, uh, practically, and effectively came into force. Okay, so the records are to the effect that the first enrollment, interestingly, <laughs> uh, not in excess of 900 people or so applied, including persons who already held various degrees in various subjects or professions. And out of that, just about in excess of 100 or so, if I in excess of about 69, be specific, um, found themselves into the law school where Makola is now. So we, what, what we have been talking about today oh, yes. is not a problem yes, of today. Specific figures are there. I'm just <laughs> trying to give you summaries. Mm. Mm. Then, incidentally, only nine people were able to be called to the bar at the end of the day. Go over those figures again. So just the, about in excess of 900. 900 then applicants. In, yes, then in excess of 69 or so were admitted. Okay. And then out of that, <laughs> only nine were called to the bar. In fact, I understand they should have been 10. Um, All right. The old man, Kokuba, mm. um, due to some challenges, not within his control. I mean, the political system and its ramifications made it impossible for him to be called on that day. But our friend, or Safo Boabe, okay. his father was one of them, the only surviving um, member of that team, if I may be permitted to say, is uh, Bannerman. Okay. Bannerman Williams, yes. All right. our, our friend's <coughs> father. <thing. clears throat> so I think he's the only survivor, and we intend to acknowledge all of them in due course. So this is where then the General Legal Council was established, and it was established to also perform certain functions, including organization of legal education. And they were to, to do so by also establishing institutions of learning right. approved by them, so that the council then subsequently established the Ghana School of Law, <coughs> which is the institution that was envisioned under um, Act 32. Right. And so that is the status of Ghana School of Law. Mm. And also to establish other allied um, institutions that will serve as catalysts for the performance of their function. So the, the subsection 3 of the section 13 says that the council shall issue to those who have satisfied the council that they have attained the necessary standards of proficiency in the law, that they have obtained adequate practical experience in the law, and that they are otherwise qualified to practice as lawyers, a certificate to that effect hearing after referred to as a qualifying certificate. Yes. There's a lot in this That's particular mouthful, subsection. Yes, I know, mm. but there's even more um, than what we have read. If you read that together with section three mm. of the act, okay. which also states qualifications for enrollment. Mm. A person shall be qualified for enrollment if he satisfies the General Legal Council that he is of good character. Mm and that he holds a qualifying certificate granted under part two of this act by the General Legal Council. And a person may, at the discretion of the General Legal Council, be enrolled if satisfied, if the council is satisfied, that, or if he satisfies the council that he is of good character and that he is qualified to practice in any country having a sufficiently <laughs> analogous system of law and that his qualifications are such as to render him suitable for enrollment and fulfill such conditions, whether as to status or proficiency as may be prescribed. The subsection three mm. is also on there. And this is the one that concerns what we call the post call okay. in particular. These are people, Ghanaians and sometimes non Ghanaians, who have been enrolled in the UK to practice law as, if you like, barristers mm. or as solicitors. In, in two subsections, in two of the subsections, it begins with that he is of good character. Yes. <clears throat> that he is of good character. That's right. So it's not only about the academics. No. So if you notice the, um, uh, the 
advertisement that we issued mm -hmm. for the admission of um, post-course students this year, I think just a couple of days ago in the daily graphic, mm. we highlighted that as well. You need to establish by provable um, documentation that not only, for example, for post-call, have you been called to say the English bar, okay. but your name continues to be in their role of lawyers as a person fit to practice in that country. Or in the case of the solicitors, there is an analogous documentation certified mm -hmm. by them that you're a person of good character. In addition, you need to get police attestation in terms of your, your, your character um, in relation to whether you have committed any offense, and especially if you have been convicted of an offense, say dishonesty, right. fraud, mm. and there is this strange one that they call moral turpitude. Right. That one mm. is at large, mm. but I think subjectively or generally objectively, you can determine whether you are a person who does not suffer the disability of immoral deputy. We, we deputy. thought as you read in the constitution, the first qualification needed for a judge is this kind of character. That's right. But I'm now trying to become a lawyer and I have to meet such, you know, a qualification. Yeah, so it's not just even at the beginning when you are entering. Mm. Even before you are called to the bar, mm. it is very important. So in the course of it, so at the law school, it is not only about academic qualification, not only about whether you have passed all the examinations that have been set by the General Legal Council and now through the Independent Examination Council or the General Legal Council, but you must also prove that you don't suffer from any of the disabilities that we have listed, mm. that uh, person of misconduct that has been established, bad character, moral turpitude, and the rest of them. But so what does it mean to say that the person must have attained the necessary standards of proficiency in law, that they have attained adequate practical experience in law, and that they are otherwise qualified to practice as lawyers before they can be given the qualifying certificate, what does that mean? Yes, so you know that on the day of call, yes, you'll be told that, quote unquote, you are now a lawyer, mm -hmm. but you cannot even start practicing because you need to continue the education and the aspect that is called a pupillage, right. where you'll be assigned to some firms or um, the legal department of some institutions where you ha that institution will have to certify that beyond the qualification that you obtain at the law school, you have attained further skills. Because it has been said that a badly trained lawyer is a danger to society right. and, and all of that. So that is also part of the qualification. So we have a minimum um, threshold on theories, and we are going to highlight that. But the, substantially, it's about practical training. Okay. Okay, how to, uh, you may know about trespass, and a friend told me, our parents know about trespass. Mm -hmm. They know about damages, mutual damage, mm -hmm. yeah. and so on, <laughs> which is exactly what we talk about, yeah. compensation for mm -hmm. a wrongful act or trespass. Mm -hmm. But perhaps the process by which they can invoke the jurisdiction of the court is what they may need further training on. Right. That is exactly what, what we do. So the theory aspect is there, and then sufficient skill so, and then the standards, you know, the Legal Profession Act has also caused other regulations for standards okay. to be established. Right. You need to prove that you have sufficiently acquired knowledge in all this, and you actually live and practice these standards before they can certify that. Mm. Now, not only are you a lawyer, you are now also given a license to practice. Right. And that will be after the certification post the pupillage that you, you'll be engaging or undertaking. Right. Um, now you do an internship even whilst you are in school. And then once you are, you have finished the school and you have been called to the bar. And when he says called to the bar, it's, it's uh, an occasion. That's sort of the final occasion by which, you know, you will officially be handed, you know, your certificate as someone who has passed all your exams 
and there's nothing that's been found wrong with you, and you can now, you know, go out there, do your pupillage, um, six months, some places, uh, uh, one year, and then after that, you will be giving your certificate to practice, that's it, the license, license to practice, and then you can start to begin to go to court and do your work, or even do your work from uh, a chambers or uh, an institution as a corporate uh, practitioner. Now, um, I want us to start from this way. Oh, yeah. um, so this year, right. the year started on, on a good note for you. The year started with us hearing the information that the director of the legal education in the Ghana uh, School of Law was going on retirement, uh, Prempe Ek, Kwesi Prempe Ek. Yes. Um, and then we got the news that you were going to be installed as the next person. Then it didn't take long, then we got another news that you were going to be installed as, you know, Marehene of Achim Ebuakwa. Um, so, first of all, how difficult is it to manage this terrain and add what you, and before that, you, and I suppose that you still will be doing as a managing partner of Ampafo, Opong, and Associate, um, a law firm that has been known to do some, lead some very big cases in the country. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank, thank you for the compliments. I mean, it's, um, I have to be thankful. Some of these very kind words mm. are read when you are dead <laughs> as your tribute. So when you are alive and you hear people read them to you or express them, you need to be thankful. Because at least I can see you and hear you. Mm. Speak. That's on the low side. Um, so yes, I mean it's. Um, it was on uh, my birthday, 25th December, when I received a message from Osajefo, the um, overlord of the Achimwebuaka traditional area, through his secretary, that um, he has appointed me as a manre in a subject to the performance of relevant rights and customary um, requirements. And so on 22nd. January, all that happened. Mm. And subsequently, um, I got to know about the, um, the retirement of my predecessor, Mr. Prempe. And almost at the last end, I decided to try my luck. Mm. And I had to present a mission statement and all that was required. And by the grace of God, I went through after some rigorous interview and, and series of inquiries. And, and it must be very rigorous and the inquiries yes. must be very uh, detailed because of yes. the people we know yeah. at, the, <laughs> at the General <laughs> Legal Council. Yes. And we'll come there because some of your questions border on the, uh, and some of you have actually used the expression sahindrin. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So yes, so mm. on, um, on first April, uh, that's, uh, I think a, day, uh, two, a few days before, about a month before I got a letter that I have been um, appointed mm. and that I was to resume work, assume work or duty on 1st April. Um, it frightened me a bit knowing the ignominious significance of the <laughs> that date, 1st mm. <laughs> April, April Fool and, right. and all that. Right. But because I had attended the interview and so on, right. it was quite significant for mm. me. And so I assumed office, that's the day before I had seen and earlier, I had uh, met with my predecessor, who was very kind and gracious and generous mm. with, um, proper, with notes that, uh, and, and some pep talks right. that, that were going to guide me. And mm. so it's about a few days, more than 100 years, 100 days now, to, sorry, and we are settling. Mm. It's, it, very good. it's supposed to be a place that brings up controversy almost every year because of the number of people who want to get in, don't get to get in, the number of people who sit exams and, you know, so many fail. And, and so I, I ask myself, are you not, you know, were you not, didn't you say to yourself that, look, I'm comfortable being a law lecturer, you have taught the law, uh, Central University, other places, and even the same uh, law school. That's right. um, wasn't, didn't you feel that's enough? rather than put yourself in a place where <laughs> there'll be controversy to deal with? Well, as a lawyer, I tell my student um, jokingly that we thrive on controversy. And 
Otherwise, if there was no controversy, how can we even have many lawyers? In fact, there cannot be a case, a civil matter pending in court without a controversy. Otherwise, for issues. If there are no legal issues, mm. then it's not a matter worth being adjudicated upon in court. That's right. So we like controversies. <laughs> and what we also try to do, pray to God to give us the wisdom, fortitude, and knowledge to at least go around it to the best of our abilities. And we leave the rest to God. So they, they came up. I mean, mm. I have been in that school. And even as we were outside, you can um, occasionally hear about some matters that um, will attract public mm. um, sometimes condemnation. In fact, most times condemnation. But there have been instances where great things have been done. After all, this is a school that almost every person who is a lawyer today have had something to do with it. Even if you were trained in the um, common law jurisdiction other than Ghana, you still came and had some kind of interaction with the, with the school before you could even be issued with a license to practice, as the current situation is. Mm. So these are the fundamental achievements of the school. But of course, the school cannot go about trumpeting these things. So yes, these challenges were very live. I mean, they are not latent at mm. all. But uh, by the grace of God, I have oh. been empowered to mm. deal with them the mm. best I can. For some of us, when we saw that you had written that you know, huge, voluminous, 1,060 pages of a book. Um, we said, okay, maybe, maybe I wants to, you know, uh, retire to that space <laughs> and, be, and be writing. And then suddenly we realize that you are going into this. I'll, I'll come to that because right. uh, I think that is also important because that book is seminal. But let's go to one question right. from uh, some of our... Uh, viewers. So, so far, there are three questions that have come in. One came in earlier and two have just come in. And they are all asking a question I suspect you have already uh, attempted to answer. Um, good afternoon. Please find out from Barima Yaopong. Uh, when will they do the LLB advert for the entrance exam? And when is the exams? <clears throat> earlier, there was a similar question from uh, Francisca. Right, that, that's a very important question. And I must state that the General Legal Council has by regulation established a body called Independent Examination Committee. I am not a member of that committee, okay. even as Director of Legal Education. And so anything about examinations has nothing to do with us anymore. We don't, the law school doesn't organize examination. The law school doesn't administer examinations or questions. Anything about examinations is specifically by law assigned to that individual. But you are not only director of the um, Ghana School of Law. You are also director of legal education. That is right. Mm -hmm. But by design, that institution is called Independent Examination Council. And let me compare it to let's say Pope John Secondary School. Let me use that because that's my, my school. Mm. Pope John Secondary School, headmaster. That's nothing to do with WAYEC. WAYEC organizes, administers examination for students, eligible students like candidates from Pope John, for example. And that is a position mm. I find myself, or I am in, and the law school is in. Nothing in terms of administration of examinations, whether as entrance exams or internal exams, organized in the name of the General Legal Council, has anything to do with us. Okay. And so as far as I'm concerned, I sympathize with the person, but I am also at sea, mm. or we are all waiting. The question is pregnant with the fact that it has been the practice that notices are, are issued. That's right. And so let's all wait in bated breath I believe that in due course, perhaps um, our curiosity will be satisfied in no time than maybe the present. So mm. let's wait for that institution to perform the function that has been assigned to them. Tied to that question is the issue of access That's right. and the numbers. <clears throat> we will come to you having come in and what your agenda has been, what you have been doing to reform 
uh, things because we remember that until you went in, you had, you know, uh, joined discussions, debates about the needed reforms that needed to take place. That's right. right. So, um, the, among the questions that came, you could also see in many of them about whether or not there's going to be an expansion because we had heard about not only a double stream, but even a triple stream <laughs> that had made it possible for, is it more than a thousand students That's right. yes, to have yeah, access? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And that was like uh, historic. That's right. That's, yes, yes, you are, you are right. Um, is, I think the bottom line is that the legal training has become attractive. Mm. I mean, some years ago, it used to be MBA and all the other but people could have our time we were 55 when uh, we were living in Legon, mm -hmm. and I think a couple dropped or so. Okay. But now in one class, even the, the famous 499 mm. alone, yeah. yeah, it's almost 500, and there had already been about 700 plus students. So the legal profession and perhaps legal training has become very attractive. And amongst people yearning to and have a sex, and becoming lawyers are people who already hold professions in other professional institutions or bodies, like medical doctors, you have a number of them, pharmacists, you have a number of them, accountants, and so on. So you are tempted to agree that if all Ghanaians want to be lawyers, and they have the needed or the required skill, character, and meet all the requirements, perhaps it will be a better place. Mm. Because the doctor who wants to be a lawyer, obviously is not going to abandon his medical practice, but it is going to aid him mm. in answering what I call the last ultimate question, what does the law say? <laughs> and so what does the law say in relation mm. to negligence committed by a medical a doctor, doctor, for example, and not mm. what medicine has said or what accountancy has said. Yeah, that is what if you want to sound boastful, mm. makes the law the ultimate profession. All right. All right. So mm. we shouldn't be surprised that a large number of people want to enter. I wouldn't be surprised that in excess of 3,000 may even apply to enter this year. So as part of what I have been thinking about and which I included in my mission mm. is the issue of taking advantage of the effect of COVID. Mm -hmm the use of virtual systems, but not in a way that will mean organizing lectures, in-house lectures one time and another time organizing a separate one. The cost involved will be quite unbearable. So if there is a system in place that at the same time lectures are being organized or conducted in a classroom, people who have already been admitted and for some reason or circumstance want to have if you like distant virtual education, partially, mm -hmm. that is possible. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you may agree that for legal training, some physical interaction with the trainers is an absolute requirement. Okay. And so there could be a time that even like um, the post call, and recently in London, quite a large number of young people who have finished, um, who have been enrolled to practice law in the UK about 30 of them really want to have the benefit of their country. Most of them, though, citizens of the UK. Mm. So see Ghana as their first and last country. But they cannot think about leaving the UK, their job, for close to 10 months or one year to come here and do the pupillage. So can't we arrange and have a system where perhaps they will come, physically assess, mm -hmm. they do one month in, say, no, uh, October, November, middle of November, go back, and a month or six weeks before examination in June or July, they return to engage in further um, physical interaction. Fortunately, when I um, hinted one of the uh, members of the authority, they graciously agreed. Okay. And I believe that if systems are put in place, very soon this um, facility that will enable people to have, if you like, quizzal training, partial training online or virtual and, and also physical training at the law school will be possible. 
and, and so we are hoping that 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 will come up and that will resolve mm -hmm. the um, the serious situation because as we speak you'll be surprised to know how much we pay a day for renting a space for lectures at the University of Ghana and uh, the other campuses. You, oh, you don't see. even want to know. Mm. And it is just unsustainable. But okay. at the same time, you need to provide legal education, as you know. Ours is the only um, profession that people who have not even been trained, because justice emanates from the people, mm -hmm. can even conduct their own cases, even though they are not lawyers. That's right. It is the only profession. You don't need mm. legal training or education to conduct your own personal case right. from the district court mm -hmm. to the Supreme Court. Someone did it, go to Supreme Court, my law is unfair that my, my, the party on the other side has lawyers. They have complied with all the rules. Why don't you then modify the rules for me? Reduce the bar. Then the court said no. Once you decide to conduct your own case, which you are entitled to do, mm. then you are to comply with all the rules of procedure and substantive law mm. that are applicable to your case. So we are happy that the law has become very attractive. Mm. Mm. We will also ask, especially ourselves, I, 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 some words of wisdom I heard, um, or change me for example, calling people to go back home. He said, when you were leaving home, you didn't even have a bicycle. Mm -hmm. You can hardly afford a shirt. Now you've become a rich professional go back home and help to uh, go and help the, the very institution that by the grace of God has made you. So we are calling all lawyers. Mm. In fact, just to add to this, sometimes like this year alone, I had to guarantee for about four or so people who offered to bring their um, checks, predated checks. Mm -hmm. Otherwise they were not going to be able to pay their examination fee or even the rest of their, of their fees. These are brilliant people gone through the process, but genuinely, mm. they can't just afford. Um, the other side of it, which I'm tempted to say, is that there are others who had already paid, got scholarship, and I even invited some of them, will you be kind enough to at least lend us a bit of the money so that those who don't have can also be given. I'm mean, yet. Okay to get a positive response. That's, that's, that's good to, to know. And we are speaking to the Director of Legal Education and the uh, Ghana School of Law, Yao Opong. And for those of you, we know this is very special for you, particularly uh, law students and prospective law students. And the questions we have had are actually coming from you. <clears throat> now, um, a number of people sent me a question and I don't know if that's a question, but it seems to be a question. <laughs> you know, the question was, but why do they call the place Makola? Oh, yes. <laughs> well, so there's a book that is written by Professor uh, Bonzi, uh, Sylvie Bonzi. Mm -hmm. yeah, Sylvie Bonzi, yes. And I started reading it, and it opened my mind. You see, it's a place that perhaps the significance that is attached to it it's almost lost, even on us. Mm. And it, for me, it then enlightened me about this part, important constitutional provision, justice emanates from the people. When you are entering the school, you see people with heavy lading, yeah. kaya yo and mm. kaya ye, yeah. walking about, right at the gate, people are selling words, they and their, their kids sitting on the floor, you enter the school, people wearing elegant suits. Yeah. Huge cars, luxurious cars. Across on the side, the Bank of Ghana is there, mm -hmm. where all the money's in Ghana, and the source of money's in Ghana are managed mm -hmm. and perhaps substantially stored. Right. Across, then the humongous Supreme Court building, it's also there. Far apart, you see the Anglican church right. to take um, care of the needs of us humans as we aspire to reach the Almighty mm. in future. So in that circumference, you find people from all walks of life in Ghana. Some, sometimes when you come there, and I took pains to just come there sometimes late in the night, okay. and people are just sleeping mm. on the floor right in front of the school. 
and you go to where the Bank of Ghana is, the courts are, the place is empty. Right. They have gone to their homes. Mm -hmm. I'm sure very comfortable, secured places, but others are left and sleeping on the floor right in front of the school. And it's, it's even enough to make you cry, to be honest. So I asked some of my students, especially as a post school, do you take note of this? Have you ever asked yourself, how do these people survive? Perhaps you had cantonment or Laboni. Mm -hmm. You went to the big schools close to the airport. <laughs> From then, you went to airports, you went to London or US. You came back to that same place close to the airport. From there, you are in a comfortable car. Mm -hmm. You come to the school, you don't even get down. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when I get down and I walk around, indeed, I even remember where I was about 24 years ago when we had to walk go and eat um, Gary and beans at the ECG. <laughs> and I have a friend of mine, a top military <laughs> officer. Mm. So he likes Latin. Right. He said, Madam, can you give me beans in lieu of meat? In <laughs> lieu of meat. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. Just say you don't have money for meat, so exactly. you just give you more, more beans. Right. And so mm. you see all this. Then truly, you see that this is the place that the law school should be. Okay. So as justice emanates from the people, which mm. people? All people from all walks of life. Those who have been labeled great, those who have been by circumstances, quote and unquote small, mm. but all of them, the good Lord takes care of us all. And the next day we come. So Makola then I ask, and there's a controversy about it. Now somebody said, la. La, and that's why I asked you whether right. that word alone have two meanings depending on how you raise your voice or you tone it down. Right. So you have a meaning that tells you blood, and it's a meaning that tells you fire. Either way, I understand etymologically it, it applies to the place. So when you say la, which means fire, it is said that an old man who lived there years ago, uh, you know, those days they could just crash two stones and you get fire. Right. And fire was one of the most important sources of energy mm. and power, wealth. I mean fire, mm. okay? So I'm going to fetch or I'm going to take fire. Marco La. Yes. Then the second meaning, which some find it offensive and therefore don't even want the place to be referred to as Marco La, is that I'm going to fetch blood. Mm. That at that time, there were vampires or people who were just into attacking mm. others. So when you pass there, they may draw your blood mm. or arm robbers. And indeed, even now, when we are there, you hear Juloe, yeah. Juloe, mm. Kronfu or Kronfu, mm. thief, thief. You hear others also preaching. Yes. Very loud enough mm. for you to hear. So you, it is a place where that's, that's the center of Ghana in my view. So for me, I prefer the I'm going to take fire. Mm. Because you see the generosity of a person and how he wants to ensure that others have access to the most important thing at the time, which is fire. Mm. And, and I would rather prefer that to the vampire because with the fire, all of us have become lawyers. This is about the fire of education right. and legal training. Right. And it has never had any negative effect on us. So we rather prefer the one that evinces positivity, progress, an advancement. Mm. And so that is what I understand Makola is about. If there are others who will be interested to know. But I search online everywhere. Unfortunately, someone is yet to even write comprehensively about these things. Okay. So I had no idea that, you know, the director of the school would take his time to find out what exactly Makola is and represents. So when you were sending in those questions, I'm just looking at them here and I, I thought, uh, but what is that question about? We are talking <laughs> law, except that um, we say Makola because the school is right there in the thick of Makola. So uh, many want to say Makola to represent the law school, and many say so, in fact. Some um, even say we have mm, Kumasi Makola, mm, Kumpa Makola. It's all well and good. Yakubu Ibn Chamba <laughs> says that um, it's a great show, and I am tempted. It says the temptation is so high to read law. Um, but that brings the question. Someone asked the question. 
knowing the fact that every year there are thousands who want to enter and yet only a few get the opportunity to enter. Should he pursue legal education? What will you tell him? Yes, he must. Because as I said, at least you'll be the mo most competent person to answer the last question. Mm. What does the law say? And this so, question is actually coming from a very prominent guy in this country. And uh, he says he wants to do it, yes. but he's asking himself, do I have the chance to enter the school? Please do. If there are two people, why can't, it, can't you be one? If you are taking ten, why can't you be part of the ten? And then we we'll go and look for the nine. What the point is, and it brings us to the entrance exam, for example. You see, we try to, as much as possible, um, sieve, as it were, those who have the intention to become lawyers. And like the background I gave you, this is not starting from today. Right. In fact, I understand in the 1960s, after your A-level, you will still have to write entrance exams in order to be admitted to the law faculty. It was for the law profession alone, and probably sometime also, the medical, um, medical school. But for law, the same qualification from A level that you could have entered any of the faculties straight away, you needed to write entrance exam as, as, as far back as 1960s before you could enter. In our case, we entered 95, but they told us only 55 can progress to the second year. And if you failed one paper, which is not even a law paper, mm -hmm. you were out. Even if it's not a law paper, you were out. And I remember a friend told me during the vacation that he has heard that um, he had 39 in the subject. <laughs> and because of that, he should forget about the law. Mm. He, in fact, left the country to pursue other profession. And when you were moving from your hall to go and check your results, especially for those of us who were average, mm. for some reasons mm. and circumstances, my brother, is the... Is, it's the best journey ever in your life. <laughs> mm. But uh, by the grace of God, you have come far. Mm. Yeah. So I'll encourage all of them, make the effort, write the exams, count yourself among two or five or 10 that you think we may take, and justify yourself. At the end of the day, if that, you remember, just say quickly, mm. there's one person that was called to the bar a couple of months ago in the uh, mini core. His classmates have been lawyers for more than 40 years or close to 40 years. There's a lady. A gentleman. OK, there's another lady who has yes. a similar story. Yes, mm -hmm. and just recently, he said he will be lawyer before he dies. And that is the attitude. And I say that for law, strangely, even though you look at five years or six years, I think it's the only cause that time runs more than you expect. And by the time you realize, you have become a lawyer. Make the attempt, take the first step. We need. Lawyers, I've told my people that you cannot be training lawyers and not be interested in being you, lawyers. You have, done, you have done more than 20 years practicing, uh, which means that you are far above the qualification as far as years are concerned to go to the Supreme Court. Um, I envy that because um, I know I'm, that I've done my just 12, anyway. 12 years <laughs> or so. Now, your time yeah. and in our time too, we didn't set an exams to enter. All we needed was do your LLB, do it well, and then you are gone. You get, you get to enter. Are you not thinking about a situation where we can return to that system? Because, for example, Attorney General says they need lawyers, right. but they can only get a quarter of the lawyers they need. Many places, villages, uh, the, the lawyer you know, population ratio is so bad. You know, but you see, it's not only because of lack of facilities or infrastructure. For example, I made the case in my again my vision that mm. I don't understand why the Attorney General's Department for the or the state cannot write to the law school General Legal Council. Mm. The state has earmarked it's a certain amount of fines for students who are prepared to access it. They will be bonded to work for the Attorney General's department, at, let's say five years after. Because you know that we still have some lay magistrates. Mm. And I, with all due respect to them, they are very experienced and so on. But when a person has a, attained the LLB and, and also has become a lawyer, I think that in all fairness, 
they should be able to accept to go to work for the AG, wherever they may be sent in this country, because they would have easily accepted. I told you about the challenges people find um, themselves in, in paying their fees. So it is possible for the state, you know that the Ghana School of Law has to even rent land from another state institution mm. where we intend to put up a facility for classrooms. But other institutions have been given land more than what they need. But sometimes we are treated as if it's a private school. When indeed it is a public school, in fact, our IGF, about 34%, is retained by the state. You understand? So if we all get together to rethink about legal education, you will see that, yes, infrastructure is an issue, mm. but again, so, we are so, also so, minded. So the question where people have been you know, most centered on is what are you doing? You must do something. In the five northern regions, five regions, all the regions put together, only 39 lawyers. The Upper East region alone, my region, mm. where you have 1.4 million plus, mm. you have only 14 lawyers. Hang on. It doesn't mean that only 14 lawyers are passed through are uh, from there. Substantial number of them are in Accra. Their own regions, they will not go there. <laughs> Occasionally, some will establish a firm mm. and will go there. My good friend Tadios is doing right. fantastically well for his people, Dr. Yini, and, mm. and quite a number of them. I know they That's do. Right. All of us so occasionally go to our, our villages and we help. But we are all living in Accra and practicing in Accra. So, and if we should give a list of the people from the five regions who are lawyers now, you won't be amazed because you know that it will be quite substantial. Mm. So at the same time, let's also... When, when you flipped it, I just realized I'm guilty. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I try uh, not to accuse you in my presence. <laughs> so right. I think we need to look at that. Mm. Even if we cannot, by circumstances, be stationed in our village. And uh, this um, a very important person, lawyer Afoko. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amok. Yeah, Amok Afoko. He's there. Mm. Sometimes comes to Accra, right. comes to council me, goes back to practice. And we need to encourage the old Lugutera and the rest of Baumier's father and the rest of them. They used to practice the Hindi and, and the rest of them. So at the same time, let's at least open a small firm in our villages, maybe the district capital, and ensure that occasionally. The, but that should start with opening, if you like, sort of. Floodgate, quote, quote unquote, oh, well, and train more. Well, the, as I've told you, mm. honestly, if substantial number of Ghanaians are desirous of becoming lawyers mm. and they go through the process and they become lawyers, some, one of our lecturers, who is a lady, said something that perhaps may be offensive, so I may be reluctant in saying, but it relates to a, law, a, a, a housewife who is a lawyer and a housewife who is not a lawyer. Mm. And I'll leave it at that. Okay. And introduce it on occupier's liability, for example. Mm. <laughs> All right. So um, I'm going to open the phone lines now. Uh, time runs really fast. Yes. Um, open the phone lines now. You get to us. And those of you who want to ask your questions directly about legal education, the law school, those of you seeking inspiration, uh, for this, let's know uh, what your questions are. But I return to, I, I don't forget to focus a bit more on your mission or vision That's as right. to how to transform a lot of things in the area. But that seminal book that you have written, mm. Contemporary Trends in um, the, law of immovable the Law of Immovable Property, I, I ask myself, in fact, reading through mm. the openings, the foreword mm. by Justice Don Jones Doche, yeah. and seeing that uh, uh, Justice Eninia Boa, the Chief Justice, is also behind, mm. you know, uh, commending yeah. what you have done. What was your inspiration? Because many lawyers, a number of lawyers have written, but they don't write as much. Yes, so, well, when we were in school, um, I was lucky the second year I, I was able to get um, the law reports as at that time, 1994. My brother, 
may so rest in peace, was gracious enough to. Um, that time you could pay postdated checks and it will be given to you. Mm. And one of our lecturers, the famous one, which you know, said, nothing frightens your colleagues when they come to your room and see a lot of books, <laughs> big ones. Then they ask you, hey, so have you been reading all these books? Say, oh, this is the fourth time mm -hmm. I've finished reading this big one. I'm right. even starting the second one. Mm -hmm. and, that, that, and then I realized that over the years, the flair to read. Students don't even take law reports anymore. Mm -hmm. So I decided that. Some say that book contains about five different books. Mm -hmm. I said, no, let it be one. Mm -hmm. And the person who inspired me most, when you read the first part, you will see, I said a conversation, a WhatsApp conversation that I had with someone. It was about John Mensah Saba. Mm -hmm. And I have him here that he was called to the bar in 1887. In fact, earlier on, since 18. Um, 87, mm. there had been quite a number of, of, of lawyers who had been enrolled in the role of lawyers. So then he asked, do you know how old Mensa Saba was when he died? I started imagining the... And 80, we all quote him. 80 years mm -hmm. and so. He said, no, he was only 46. I couldn't believe it, but of course I believed him. And so I said, then let me also mm. produce a book before my birthday on... Uh, 46th birthday, and okay. I, I, I struggle to achieve that. That is uh, quite inspiring. And, and for many of you, uh, students of the law or even lawyers, you may not have thought about the fact that Mensah Saba was that young when he wrote, and we all quote him, and forever we will quote him. Yes. Um, Hassan. That was when he died, 46 mm. years. Okay. Hassan, you are calling from Accra. Let's hear you. Good afternoon, and um, thank you for the opportunity. Right. Um, my question, I heard a um, lawyer talk about the fact um, that he hasn't got control when it comes to the IEC, but I want to ask this particular question in relation to the undertaking. Um, I want to know his opinion when it comes to the introduction of the undertaking in the exams, because it has been proven um, by remarking, or the remarking that normally occurs, at Makola, that it's a human institution, and sometimes mistakes are inevitable. I want to know his position when it comes to the undertaking that one has to sign before writing the exam. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so he's saying that he just wants to know the reason, um, uh, know the reason or your position for introduction of the undertaking in the entrance exams. Okay, so um, what, what I know... People undertake that, what? When they write the exams and then... They, what I understand him say, there are two undertakings, mm -hmm. but if this is in relation to the entrance exam before exactly. you enter, mm -hmm. then I guess it's about that you may not be able to seek remarking of a sort. But my view really is that if that is a condition precedent and you have agreed to undertake, commit yourself... It's a contract. If you think that you may not be able to comply with the terms, then you don't have to enter into that agreement. His suggestion is that you, you, in charge of legal education, the school of law, must have something to do about it. Because you, you said that the independence examination body is independent, so you are not... Yeah. So, so the, in fact, that is the fact. Mm. I don't set these rules, nor the law school. All right. Neither that the law school set this. It's the general okay. legal council and its mm. independent examination mm. body. But I think it's for good reason. All right. Joshua, you're calling from Akuse. Hello, let's hear you quickly, Joshua. Yes. Um, thank you, uh, Dr. Young, alumni, alumni of my. Thank you. I received the doctor. Um, <laughs> Yes, my question is, I, you, you made a statement that if every Ghanaian uh, wanted to be a lawyer, it, it's a good thing. Uh, I think years ago, uh, the former Chief Justice made a statement that uh, she's not interested in the mass production of lawyers. So in many Ghanaians becoming lawyers, is it a good thing or a bad thing? Okay, and thank you. Yao Frimpong, you are calling from Kumasi. Hello, Yao. Yes, good afternoon, Samson. Good afternoon. Yes, I want to ask from your legal field, this is the legal education. If my brother was sentenced, hello? 
Please go ahead with your question. Yes, my brother was sentenced in prison for 20 years. Are you getting me? Um, okay, uh, I'm, you, sorry. You, I'm sorry. I'm you, sorry. Y'all leave uh, your question with my producers. We'll talk to you after that. Oh, okay. Um, I should leave the question. Today, we are taking it very light somewhat, uh, having a conversation about law education and getting to know also uh, who the director of legal education and the uh, law school is. Right, so... Okay, so mm. the question about whether it's good or bad that <laughs> many Ghanaians... <laughs> no, when they become lawyers, it means they have gone through the process. They've been certified to have acquired sufficient skill, knowledge, practice, and of good conduct and behavior. Mm. So, I, I, and the word mass, I don't understand that. Is it in terms of a large number of people becoming lawyers in a day? Once they become lawyers, I mean... I like iPhone a lot. In a year, they can produce millions. Mm. Can you tell me that iPhone has low quality? In fact, it's not about, uh, let me not even commit, but there are others that, but I think that producing something in large numbers per se doesn't mean that it will lose quality. Okay. It depends on, in any case, these persons spend only two years at the law school. Mm. They would have spent about four years or three years at the university level, and some had even become graduates already. We are, we are so, running out of time. So in, a, in a minute, what yes. would be your biggest achievement that you look to, you look to make? Well, that, as I said, we must get as many qualified Ghanaians as possible to be lawyers. Mm -hmm. But just so that uh, I make this point also, um, the unfortunate thing that happened on Friday, the postponement of the examination, civil procedure, I want to empathize with the students. We have all been as, as students before. Um, the point is that uh, I, for example, in the law school, don't deal with examinations. The body that is in charge, I believe in due course, the examinations will be written. I think a new date has been fixed for 25th. I think they should keep calm. When they were starting, we sent them word of encouragement, prayers, and inspiration. Mm. They should focus on this. And, and I'm very sure there will be a surprise for them, mm. a positive surprise for them, on the last day and even by October. Okay. Thank you very much. Yao Opong is the director of the Ghana School of Law. Um, somehow, I don't know why I thought that I have so, I have a lot of time and uh, I have set a number of things to deal with him on. And in fact, some of you have sent issues and questions that I've not been able I'm to put to him yet. Thank you very much. This is um, the law. It's your legal light. It's your help law. Have a good afternoon.